A quick historical note and some facts about the AVR or audio video receiver that you may not know and why it is so important and such a critical component in a home theater system today more so than it was in the early days of home theater. There's one reason that the AVR has become such a critical component, not just because it's the core or the center of your system, it's because of really one thing, HDMI. The HDMI connector essentially made the AVR responsible for the majority of the quality of both the audio and the video throughout your home theater system. Now in the early, early days of home theater, DVD players had multiple analog outputs. They may require like eight different cables to connect to separate analog inputs on early AVRs. And these, this was commonplace uh, in earlier days. Those same DVD players often had digital output as well, so that you could plug that into your AVR. But in many cases, um, serious home theater enthusiasts believed that if you bought uh, a very high-end DVD player and a little bit later a Blu-ray player that had excellent quality DACs or digital to analog converters built into them, that it was better to actually have that high quality conversion to analog going on inside the DVD player or the Blu-ray player. That made uh, the AVR in some respects less critical. It was important to have good analog electronics, but you know the actual decoding and everything was going on basically inside the, the source component or the DVD player or Blu-ray player. Another thing that was important is that most AVRs in the earliest days had dedicated so-called pre-outs or pre-amplifier outputs. So you didn't have to buy the biggest receiver so that you had the highest power ratings. You could just connect a multi-channel high power amplifier to your AVR and, and that was it. HDMI has changed everything because in most setups, all of your source components, where, whether it's a streaming device like a, a, you know, an Apple TV, your Blu-ray player, uh, your cable or satellite box, et cetera, will usually all plug directly into the HDMI inputs on a modern AVR, and the AVR then is responsible for pulling the audio off of all those signals, doing all of the conversion to analog, all of the decoding is done in the digital domain first, and the quality of those DACs, those digital to analog converters, along with the analog circuitry, is now critically important. Another very important thing is, is that if the video is passing through the AVR, you want whatever is going on in the HDMI circuitry to be the highest quality. If you're a cinephile or your real video file and you prize top quality video performance and have a very expensive, let's say 4K TV. You don't want any of the signal, the video part portion of the HDMI signal to be messed up in any way because it passes through your AVR. So this is something critical. Very, very expensive AVRs by their nature because you can buy a decent, a decent one for you know, $199, $299 now but they're not going to have the best video pass-through or video processing quality. They're not going to have the state-of-the-art digital analog converters, and they're not going to have great power output either. So that's why I feel that the AVR has become really the most critical component because it's the center of your home theater system. Now, yes, obviously loudspeakers are extremely critical too, and many would say that spending more money on your speakers is gonna make a more audible difference than a more expensive AVR. And that may be the case in many setups, but don't forget that just because you can buy a very, very inexpensive AVR means that you should do that. Just remember all of the tasks and the functions that are taking place inside this piece of electronics. 
I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. Did you have a system back in the early days of um, home theater where you had you know, uh, seven channels or five channels plus a subwoofer of analog connections running from your DVD player to your AVR? Did you use an external amplifier uh, for your AVR back then? What are your feelings? Do you, maybe you think that I'm completely wrong and off base and forget about this component, just buy the cheapest one and buy the best speakers. I'd love to hear from you and thank you very much as always for watching.